Hi, Lindsay. This is Lee. I was just going to give you a couple of tips that look like you were doing a really good job tracing. So I'm going to give you, um, I think, one little tip that I find is useful, and that is using Spiro Spline instead of the regular Bezier tool. So on this picture, if I click on the Bezier tool, the pen, and you go up here to the top menu, and you can see that there's mode, and you have several options. This one right here with a little squiggly is create spiro path. And um, you can also use that to make flourishes. I saw that you had asked about flourishes. But if you're wanting to do, this kind of gives, if you see, it makes a, um, it smooths out your line, OK? And so that can actually be useful for tracing around things like um, this hoodie here. It make, get, makes you a, a nice, smooth trace. So I was just going to show you how it works. I'm going to trace his little um, belly patch here. I think I'm going to start right over here on this side. So, And I'm using plus to zoom in and minus to zoom out. And I'm going to start right here. So I'm going to go to the Bezier tool and make sure I'm on Spiro Spline. And then I'm just going to click here. And you just, every now and then, click as you're following the curve. And you just kind of have to practice to see where. And then I'm going to double click right there to end the line. And then uh, one other thing I'll show you, this kind of little uh, crease goes down and um, goes into the what you're going to fill. So um, I'm actually going to change here. I've got the fill and stroke panel. You can open that by doing Control Shift F and then click on stroke style. And if I come down here to how I want that line to be capped, I can click on that and it changes it into a, um, a rounded cap, which looks nicer than a squared off cap. OK, so now I'm going to zoom in again, pressing the plus key and make sure my little joins look fine here. Um, one thing you have to do if you use Spiro Spline, um, you can see if I was just to take that into design space, it would turn it wonky like that. So what I what you have to do is change that to a path. So you just go up to path, object to path. And now it's just a normal stroke and you can edit it the same way. Now if I was to try to edit it before I changed it, it edits, let's see, let me get back to where I was. It edits it like a spiro spline, which um, has some differences than from a regular um, pen tool. So let me go back and just say path, object to path, OK? Then I can go over here and trace this one the same way. Click back on my pen, make sure it's on Spyro, and then just drag it along the curve you're trying to trace and click. Basically, when it, when it sort of, you kind of just follow the curve. And there's that. And I can go back and check my ends. I got a little overlap here, so I'm just going to move that back. And that looks fine. That one doesn't, there's not a, um, a place where it goes into where you're going to fill. So I'll just leave those with a square cap. And then change it to path again, path object to path. But there's a keyboard shortcut, shift control C. So I'm just going to do that, shift control C. And that changed it into a regular stroke. Then I can go back and fine tune it. Oops. And then also tracing like this, I like to save it really often. So um, control S for save, just like every couple of every couple of um, lines that I draw, I save it because Inkscape kind of sometimes gets wonky. Okay, so I'm going to trace this with the Spiro spline too. So I'll just go back to my pen. It's still on Spiro, and just follow the curve around. It makes a nice smooth curve, and then you don't have to spend the time going back and smoothing out the nodes. Okay, like that. And then Control Shift C to change it to a path. And then I can go in and move these nodes around a little bit. Okay, so hopefully, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can show, tell you. I think that's good. And then, like I said in the email, once you get this done, the entire outline done, you'll want to save that with a different file name. So like I've got this saved as Mickey and Stitch. When I go to save just the outline, I'll probably say Mickey and Stitch underscore outline and save that and not do any more editing on that 
um, in case I need to go back to it, in case I mess something up when I'm filling it with colors. And then once you're done, you could go back and delete it um, off of your computer. So let me know if you have any other questions.